to Nicolas the podcast. Today's episode is a nice little story time, which is very exciting. I'm going to be speaking into my journey with San Pedro, the one time I journeyed with this sacred plant medicine and what came up for me before, what came up for me after, what came up for me during the actual ceremony and how it looked. It was such a powerful and life-changing experience for me personally and it was also something I didn't even really know about really quite close to journeying with it like I wasn't really super educated on it and it just all worked out so divinely as things that are meant to be for us always do but before we jump into all of this I just want to remind you to head over to my Instagram and TikTok which is sacred space w Tanika Lace if you want to stay in the loop with what I'm up to with what I'm doing in between podcast episodes this week's self-love ritual is so simple (laughs) but I have just today actually had a photo shoot with a beautiful photographer here on the Sunshine Coast and you know every time I've ever had photos taken of me it's always such a confidence booster and you always get to see yourself literally through a different lens and it makes you feel so much better um I feel like recently I I have been dealing with a bit of um, insecurity within my body and there's just been little bits and pieces coming up that I'm shifting through and I'm okay, but having this photo shoot today was just absolutely incredible and exactly what my soul needed. So my self-love ritual for the week is for you to take some photos of yourself, (laughs) to get someone to maybe take some photos of you so you can see yourself through the lens. I don't know. It just personally really shifted a lot for me and I'm feeling really good. So if you are open to this, I invite you to take some selfies, upload them, feel the love and, you know, not even doing this for validation, but doing it because you genuinely feel so fucking good behind the camera. Um, Oh my gosh, yes. Just love that. And it just really shifted a lot for me today, um, having that photo shoot. This week's quote is so beautiful. And when I read this, it really made me smile. It is never underestimate the potency and power of simply being yourself and having the courage to share it with the world. Oh my gosh. That is such a powerful message that so many people should live by. I actually invite you to write this on a whiteboard or like on your fridge or something I have a whiteboard on my fridge so that's why that came straight to mind but write this like have a quote have this quote written somewhere if it lands for you of course so that you never underestimate the potency and power of literally just being you because we are all so powerful we all have magic within us and you know sometimes it's hard to unlock those codes sometimes we feel like we can't quite see that magic or feel that magic so having this quote there oh my gosh it's just so scrumptious I'm just obsessed with it so love that so much but let's get into this episode of my journey with San Pedro so if you haven't heard of the plant medicine San Pedro it is used by shamans in the Andes and it has been used for them in ceremony for thousands of years I don't know the full like history behind this plant medicine but I did um after like journeying with it I did like kind of have a little look into it and I remember seeing something about it um like people would take it so that they could like stay up for night and go hunting because it's like got the same properties at a lower dose as MDMA like it can just sort of give you that like bubbly more energy all of that um in ceremony I don't know it kind of felt like maybe a little different to that (laughs) but yeah so like at like higher dose apparently it can be as like full on as ayahuasca although I did not find it to be at all I have not had ayahuasca but I did not find it to be at all not gentle I actually will be honest I found it to even to release emotions more gently than sacred cacao which was really interesting for me being like such a cacao lover <laughs> and I still am of course I love my cacao but I did find that this journey was um really gentle in releasing what was the beautiful shamans in who you know held the ceremony that I attended they were actually referring to it as uh, grandfather and what you will learn from grandfather connecting deeper to grandfather etc etc um but yeah oh my gosh it was so powerful and you know I still had like quite vivid visions like crazy visions almost like 
psychedelic I mean I'm pretty sure it is a type of psychedelic but I still drove home after so I don't even know right <laughs> um but yeah I definitely had like massive visions massive releases massive realizations but also felt in my body um it was when I when I did actually like feel it sort of hitting me um, I was quite nervous to try it because I've never done any psychedelics before. So I was like, oh my gosh, this new thing. I also went by myself and I was like hours away from my home. It was really random how it ended up, how I ended up there. And it was not on the agenda for my trip where I was going. So I was really out of my comfort zone completely. But I was like, my angels were like, you need to be at this place. This, this has to happen. But I do remember when it sort of was hitting me, I guess, um, it did kind of feel like my heart started racing and I had to run out to the toilet and I was a little bit sick. And then I sort of came back and I was like, whoa, okay, like I can feel it. And the shaman who was running, who has worked for a very long time with this plant medicine, he did say, um, if you sit up, that's, that allows it to like move through your body. And then once you lay down, it kind of just plateaus it and allows, um, it doesn't keep on sort of hitting you and if I don't know if that makes sense but that's sort of what he said something along the lines of that so I kind of like when it was hitting me I was like oh shit I like ran out to the toilet and I was also like so in awe of the beautiful nature around me and I was like okay firstly it's a drop dunny <laughs> secondly fuck <laughs> and then I um yeah you know did my thing and I just remember being like oh my gosh what what have I done why have I done this what the hell you know my human my ego trying to get in the way and then I like went back in and I was like I'm laying the fuck down <laughs> I don't need to feel this anymore right now so it was quite like intense when it first sort of hit me but like I said I was really out of my comfort zone I was so far away from everyone around me like I had um family an hour away but my home was hours away. So it was like, oh my gosh, like, what am I fucking doing? Like, I'm in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> All those um, things came up. But at the same time, I felt so safe. It wasn't that I didn't feel safe. It was just my ego trying to snap me out of it. Um, but then once I surrendered, so see in that as well, I was really fighting the journey. I was like, oh no, what is going to come up? Oh no, what is going to happen now? Oh no, you know, all of that sort of stuff. So once I went back in and I surrendered to what was there for me, and it was a beautiful sound healing as well. Um, wow, I am telling you, they were beating their drum. And I can remember, actually, this was before I even had to go out to the toilet. They were beating their drum and I dead set felt it was like my feet hitting the earth in a desert and I was running with each beat of their drum and it was getting so intense and I was running and I was running and I was like fuck like I can't keep running and then um yeah it was just such a powerful experience so then once I came back in from you know checking out and also um I feel like my body took me out of the room to prove to myself that I could escape I know that sounds ridiculous but it was like when it was first hitting me in there before I went out to the toilet it was like oh my gosh I'm stuck in this small room with all of these people and god knows what's gonna happen and blah 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 blah, blah. and I was just really in my head so I almost feel like my body was like you know you can go outside if you need to escape it was almost like just that um safety piece for me to know that I wasn't trapped kind of thing because that's been something I've had to work through in the past I feel fine with it now but um like a big thing that I had to work on was like that feeling of being trapped like I would just freak out and I've had like an experience like actually last year where it was like oh my gosh like if I ever am in a situation where I can't escape it my mind goes oh my god yeah anyway getting getting lost in attention here so yeah I feel like it was my ego trying to protect me in a way um but when I came back in and I surrendered oh my goodness yeah it was so powerful the visions that were coming through were just phenomenal I just actually connected with my higher self for the first time in that capacity so I feel like I always, you know, connecting with my higher self, I always connecting with my guides and I, I feel like I've got that strong connection there in my everyday life um, without anything in within my system influencing me to access those higher realms. 
but in this ceremony in particular it was so powerful I literally came face to face with my higher self I had conversations with her I had these visions of all of these beautiful um angels that are supporting me and watching me from another planet and how I came from that planet and I choose to come I chose to come down to this lifetime for this time for this reason which was like super powerful I feel like I've never really like um been someone who's like I'm from not earth I definitely feel like I'm from earth but it was just a really powerful visual that was like coming through um I had conversations with guides that were like phenomenal I was <laughs> I just in the journey was so in the journey that I was crying and crying like waterfalls of tears but not sobbing I can't even explain it, it was like my eyes were just running with water as I was coming to these incredible realizations because as I said in the start here I, like it was so gentle I truly didn't feel pain I truly didn't feel trauma. I truly didn't feel anger, resentment, no hard, heavy emotions. It was like they weren't even allowed to come through. It was just seeing things for what they are. And it was so powerful. I had a um, conversation with my partner's higher self, which was really interesting. I saw beautiful sisters who, who are in my life now, and I saw them how they were holding me I you know I had these beautiful realizations of why certain things happened to me in the past and making I made peace with them in this ceremony so softly and on a on a soul level on an energetic level on a level that like humanly you wouldn't I don't know I just feel like (laughs) it was just this magical experience um and, you know, I, I definitely had waves come through the journey where I was, my, would get in my head a little bit and be like, oh, wait, what am I fucking doing? <laughs> where am I? And then I would just surrender again. So that was really powerful, really important surrendering to the present moment. Surrendering to the present moment was huge. Um, and so interesting that I was drawn to this plant medicine as well because I do a lot of shamanic healing. I work with the right nine rites of the Munaki and I work with the ancient practices from the Incan peoples, right? From the high Andes. I work with all of these tools. I'm so embodied in all of them. And it was really interesting that I was brought to San Pedro when I was as well because San Pedro's grandfather, you know, it's quite a masculine it's like the way the shaman who I was um in ceremony with explained it was it's like he comes in and gives you a big hug it's like this really comfortable you're being held by the masculine and you you, you're being held so deeply that you can let go you feel safe you feel so safe and it is truly how it feels and um yeah so it was just interesting how this came up for me with all the work I do and being like okay whoa and then the journey I went on and what I was able to shift through and what sort of came into my mind I feel like was just phenomenal and you know I'm not like speaking into this right now to be like go and try San Pedro because of course if you're not called to it I don't recommend you do it then and also I'm not at all like trying to influence you to do it I'm just simply sharing my point of view sharing my story um I'm sure it's not like this way for everyone and that's perfectly fine but I just felt really called to speak into it because it was such a life-changing journey for me and I have only journeyed with grandfather San Pedro once in my life so it was like it would have been about six months ago now and it's actually taken me this long now that I'm thinking about it to completely process what it was that came up for me and to feel completely integrated that would be probably the best way to put it um I would definitely personally um, journey with San Pedro again. I also want to preface, there are different ways that you can journey with this plant medicine. And I know the beautiful people who ran this ceremony. So this was only an evening ceremony. It was like from 6 p.m. to like 9 p.m. or something like that. So it was like three or four hours of ceremony. And we only had like 
a small amount of the San Pedro in like a cup and we just had to like drink it and it was like slimy and gross and it didn't taste that nice. I actually didn't mind the taste of it to be honest, but I didn't finish my whole cup because I was like, oh my gosh, what if, what if, what if, you know, I was allowing that to get in the way, which there's no shame in that. That's okay. I still had the perfect exact journey that my soul needed. Um, but yeah, apparently you can also have it in larger doses that is, um, can allow purging like ayahuasca. So I'm, you know, I don't know if I would do that because I personally at this stage on my journey, am like, I don't think ayahuasca is for me. Um, I have previously thought it was before I came across San Pedro. And then when I tried this plant medicine and realized, whoa, there are such a gentle approaches to, um, healing and to accessing these higher parts of self that may be a little bit harder to access just, you know, without being under the influence of any plant medicine. Um, and it's really shifted my perspective there. Like I said, I'm such a big cacao girl. Like I live, breathe, love cacao. <laughs> um, but the San Pedro, it did have that masculine piece to it and it was such a different journey. So I'm not sure at this stage if I would do ayahuasca. Um, I've heard such different like stories, especially around like mental health issues, like where you are mentally can really affect the journey. But I guess that's like anything, right? Like I can't really be making any judgment. Anyway, I've just realized I probably didn't even explain what San Pedro is. Oh my goodness. Classic me forgetting that <laughs> the education piece. I feel like I'm really good at sometimes doing that. <laughs> so San Pedro is actually a cactus from its native to um, South America. So they use it, like I said, over there. They've been using it for thousands of years and it's actually includes not includes it actually <laughs> my brain it actually contains um this like chemical or something called mescaline i think that's how you pronounce it but like i could be completely wrong here and that's actually what creates the psychedelic piece and like the you know like the yeah the psychedelic the visions all of that um it also is like really powerful this this particular substance that would be the word what sort of gives you the um insight into the self and the universe like like into what is here what is your universe and gives you that healing um it definitely gives you a deep and greater connection to self to earth to your spirit to your higher self to all parts in your unique universe and spirituality um but in the same hand allowing that frequency of love of um you know that gentle like gratitude um to just stay in your system so you're like floating on a cloud while shifting through these things wow i'm talking into this and it sounds incredible i do want to speak into like what happened after my journey though because i feel like um that was like big in itself so we when we like began and everything it was completely open sacred space so like we were smudged we were introduced to each other we set our intention and I can't even remember what my intention was I think I probably set the intention of like deeper clarity on my path or something like that because at that stage I was kind of seeking clarity because I was feeling um, not as clear on my vision kind of all over the shop a little bit <laughs> so I would have probably said something like that or maybe like a I want to feel deeper love I don't know um we set our intentions and then it was actually a choice to journey with San Pedro or just to stay for the sound and everyone was there for San Pedro and everyone was like I'm deepening my connection with grandfather I cannot wait blah 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 and there was even a beautiful woman next to me with her baby I was like oh my gosh who she of course she did not give the baby um the San Pedro it was just beautiful and actually brought up a lot for me um in my journey and it was really powerful having that baby there holding that space um but yeah then we sort of like and then I was like oh my gosh I'm gonna be the only one that's not gonna have it so I'm gonna have it because when I first arrived I was a little bit like do I have the San Pedro or do I just listen to the sound and then I was like fuck it Tanika seriously don't be an idiot so I um yeah then we like sort of dropped in with the San Pedro I remember at one stage there was like buckets 
just in the corner and someone was like do we need to put the buckets out and I was like oh fuck because vomiting is like one of my biggest fears and I was like god I'm out I'm out I'm out <laughs> but then the guy was like no we won't need them but keep them handy and I was like <laughs> um yeah so then we sort of dropped into the journey and it went for quite a few hours and it was beautiful sound beautiful singing beautiful space being held and then we journeyed back out of the San Pedro journey, um, grounded all the things. And then it was time to go home and I had to drive back to where I was staying, which was an hour away. And, you know, that drive was actually quite hard. Now I reflect on it. It was like, oh my goodness. Cause I was alone as well. And I feel like I was grounded, but the plant medicine was still in my system, of course. And I don't know how long it stays in your system for, but I definitely felt like maybe I shouldn't have been driving um but I drove like 50 minutes or something an hour back to where I was staying and I was so hungry because you can't eat for like a few hours leading up to ceremony just in case you do get sick well that's just like how the who was running my ceremony like that's how they sort of went by it which was perfect um I also say that when I run kick out like when I facilitate kick out ceremonies try not to eat beforehand simply because when we are like food is dense and it actually disallows us to connect to higher spaces to release things that maybe may need releasing because food suppresses our energy um so that made complete sense but god damn i was hungry and i remember getting back to where i was staying and i literally felt so sick i was like oh my goodness i feel like i'm wigging out and i you know had a shower all the things was just trying to like because it felt like I had this whole wave of just like nausea come over my body and I was like holy fuck I was so ecstatic and I was so happy but in the same hand I was like oh I'm never doing this again like I remember saying to myself I'm never journeying with San Pedro again (laughs) just because of simply how like sick I felt but it's the same as like you know if you were hungover and you say I'm never drinking again and then like the next weekend you go out for cocktails you know that sort of feeling where it's like you you can bear it but in the moment you feel like you're just going to give up and your, all of your hopes and dreams and curl up into a ball. It was that sort of feeling. Um, but I went to bed and it was really late at this point as well. So I'm usually like in bed quite early. And I remember thinking, oh my gosh, I'm in like full survival mode. I've stayed up. I've journeyed with this plant medicine with these people. I don't know. I'm not home. Like all the things. And I'm such a homebody. Like I'm really someone who loves being at home. So it was just all these like different things and my partner Jai wasn't with me so I was like oh my god just go to sleep by yourself okay and I ended up going to bed and I was you know I was in that going to bed I actually feel like I had such intense crazy psychedelic like visuals I was seeing like sacred geometry all these different things were still landing. I feel like I was remembering parts of my journey. I feel like I was still journeying, if I'm honest, like definitely was. And I just remember laying in bed going, how the fuck did I drive back? Um, as I'm speaking into this, by the way, like right now, I'm actually genuinely like remembering. I haven't even reflected on this part of that in six months. And I'm like, whoa, that's right. This is how it went. Um, but yeah, and I like remember going, okay, I'm going to put like YouTube on, like, you know, classic like (laughs) get ready with me in the morning or like morning routine or like you know those like really nice youtube videos that you just watch well personally i just love them where it's just like sophie or georgia or like someone like that on youtube and you just like listen to their voice and their routine they go to the gym and they make their smoothie and it's just so light-hearted i was like i need light-hearted right now and i put my laptop on and had my phone next to me and i was like okay go to sleep And I literally, it was one of those like nights I literally couldn't sleep. I was so like, it was almost like overstimulated. So I had my laptop turned all the way down. I remember trying guided meditation, all the things. And then like an hour in, so I, there was a stage where I fell asleep for like five minutes and I swear I was asleep all night. And I was like, God damn it. I was asleep five fucking minutes. I've got the whole night ahead of me. Um, and I actually looked over and I was like, I'm just going to grab my phone, maybe like scroll the gram whatever you want to do to try and like suppress what's coming up (laughs) you know the classic like maybe going on a screen with blue light is going to help me go to sleep that you know that yeah um and I reached my phone and it wouldn't turn on and I was like what the fuck is happening (laughs) and 
yeah, my phone just died. My phone shit itself. <laughs> Literally shit itself. And I swear, like, to this day, one moment, I just spilled water everywhere. <laughs> okay, we are sorted. I swear to this day, like, my phone broke because of the fucking high frequency of whatever was going on. And I need to, like, speak into this a little more because people think I'm just like crazy when I say this, but like there is actually something wrong with me (laughs) with technology. I'm not shitting you. I have gone through, okay, here's an example today and like no word of a lie today. I was like, okay, I'm going to cook dinner. My partner cooks a lot because I'm just not, not completely about that. But today I was like, okay, we're going to cook dinner, turn the oven on, realized 20 minutes later after there's food in it why isn't it getting hot oh i blew the oven up okay cool let's use the air fryer dead set i'm not kidding you the air fryer blew up the air fryer blew up and the oven in one day can you tell me that there's nothing wrong with me (laughs) i have had like the most bizarre things happen like i will like our coffee machine just broke in my hand like (laughs) our tv i started watching it for like a week every night and it it, got, it has like a big blue line in it. Um, my laptop has had to be replaced like three times. You get the picture. I literally feel like there's something like with my like energy that like just destroys technology. <laughs> and I just don't know what it is. And I'm like, it's kind of annoying when you're a human and you're like, um, I need to replace all of these things that constantly break. But anyway, I actually genuinely like hand on my heart feel like my phone that happened because of the high frequencies that were shifting through me and me already being in like a high frequency quite often, like all the time. It was just like way too much. And it was like, I got to call it quits. This is just too much. This is too much. So that was really interesting. Um, But I had like absolutely no care that that happened. I was like, damn it. I work off my phone like a lot damn it and then I was like that's okay someone's gonna have a spare iPhone 4 in the family that I can borrow (laughs) and lo and behold someone did until I ended up getting another phone so it was actually perfect but (laughs) it was just really funny how that happened so I wonder if that's ever happened to anyone else or if anyone else can relate to my technology issue because I don't know anyone else it happens to and I feel like I'm just on this you know I've got no one to relate to about it (laughs) um But yeah, so that was like really my journey with San Pedro, the beautiful grandfather. My story behind my journey with San Pedro. And I want you to remember that if you are on the space or the timeline of your journey where this sounds like something you want to do, please make sure you do it with someone who has been working with this plant medicine for a long time, who can hold the space for you. Um... And remembering that not everyone's like journey is the same with things. So just because I've had this, I guess it was actually quite a chaotic journey though, when you think about it, because I was like, no. And then I was like, oh my gosh, bliss. And then I was like, oh my gosh, no. And then I was like, bliss. So, you know, I guess, but that was just my conscious mind fighting. Um, But yeah, I just want to remind you as well, this is just my story. This is just my journey. I'm not in any way, shape or form recommending you to go and journey with San Pedro or telling you that this is what you need to do. But I just wanted to share my piece and my story along with it because I am someone who has never been called to or wanted to ever do psychedelics of any form. And the way that this came through for me was like, I just happened to be right place, right time my angels were like go there like you need to do this like when I say my angels I just mean like my intuition was just like this is yes 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 like it just felt so like a fuck yes and whenever something feels like such a fuck yes I'm like I gotta listen there's something here for me and there definitely was a lot there for me so yes oh my goodness thank you for listening to my journey with grandfather San Pedro I invite you to pop over and follow my Instagram so you can keep up to date with me while I'm not over here on Spotify or Apple Podcasts at Sacred Space Tanique with, oh my gosh, do I know my own Instagram handle? Probably not. (laughs) At Sacred Space W Tanika Lace. And I would love to see you over there. 
so exciting. Oh my goodness. I always say that, but it just really is. Thank you so much. I would love to hear your review, you know, like, subscribe, all those things. Absolutely love you for it. Share it with a friend. You know, if you're, you've been thinking about trying San Pedro, you know, share it with a friend you want to go, go to the journey with all of those things. I love you so much. Thank you for your support. And I will be back in your ears next week.